Meniere's disease is the second most common cause of vertigo, dizziness, and balance problems. I've been seeing Meniere's patients in my office for over 20 years. And so I made this video to kind of give you sort of a handbook on what are the causes, the symptoms, the tests, and the treatments. So if you have Meniere's disease, or you think you might have Meniere's disease, I think you're gonna find this video very helpful. All right, let's start with the basics. So Meniere's disease is a condition sometimes called endolymphatic hydrops. We don't have to get into the physiology very much, but essentially what happens is you get an accumulation of excess fluid and thus pressure in your inner ear, and that causes a kind of crushing from the inside out of both your cochlea, which you use to hear, and your uh, vestibular apparatus, which is like your semicircular canals and your otoliths. So what Meniere's typically does is it produces hearing loss, sometimes tinnitus or tinnitus. It can produce hearing changes like muffling or crackling, uh, and then it can produce vertigo. Now the vertigo can be so bad that you get nystagmus, which is a rhythmic jerking of the eyes, you get the, the spinning sensation, uh, and you can vomit or just have nausea. And I've had patients over the years that have had Meniere's uh, episodes or flares that can last for a few seconds to a few minutes to a few days. So you can imagine if you're spinning for eight or nine hours, you really can't do anything. So it can be a, a very debilitating condition. And over time, because of the what we call the postsynaptic changes or the changes that occur in the circuitry between the inner ear and the parts of the brain that process those signals, uh, you can develop a disequilibrium when you're not having a flare, uh, balance problems and coordination problems, and uh, generally just feel awful. So that's, in a nutshell, kind of very quickly what Meniere's disease does. Now, what causes it? Those are kind of the symptoms, but what causes Meniere's disease? Well, in my practice, and the research is kind of catching up to this, it's essentially an inflammatory problem. Yes, you're accumulating fluid, and if you can imagine like a like if you ever sprained your ankle and you can see it swell up, well, in your ear, there's no room for that swelling. So if there's inflammation, which is, you know, part of your immune system, if there's anything that's causing inflammation in your inner ear, then there's really no place for the swelling to go, and thus those things get crushed from the inside out. So in my practice, I'll just go ahead and tell you, uh, 9 out of 10 people who make it to me with Meniere's disease who, who aren't getting better and aren't staying better, uh, those people typically have either A, an autoimmune problem or be some sort of inflammatory problem caused by you know a food sensitivity or diabetes or something like that. Now I said autoimmune. Uh, autoimmune is when your immune system makes antibodies to attack something and in Meniere's disease there are some people that get an autoimmune attack in their inner ear but way more common at least in my practice is people have an autoimmune condition that's not in the inner ear but the side effects of that inflammatory autoimmune condition or what's causing the problem in their inner ear. Now there's a lot more things I could say about that, but I think for the purposes of this video, what I see more than anything is an autoimmune problem that's either not diagnosed, an autoimmune problem that is diagnosed, just not being treated effectively because they're still inflamed, or there's some sort of inflammatory problem in the body that's affecting uh, the inner ear. For me, that's by and large how I've been working with Meniere's disease patients over the last 20 years and why I get generally pretty good results. Now from the kind of medical side of things, typically what you'll get is something like a diuretic like HCTZ or sometimes even beta histine if that doesn't work. Beta histine is not used as often here in the United States as it is uh, in Europe, but it, but it can be helpful. Uh, sometimes you'll be told to restrict your sodium because you know sodium causes water retention. Sodium is also inflammatory if you uh, go above a certain threshold. Uh, told to limit your caffeine. And sometimes if that doesn't work, they'll do intratympanic steroids, which like they'll literally inject steroids into your inner ear. Now, why would that work? Well, steroids are anti-inflammatory. <laughs> but again, where is the inflammation coming from? So that's kind of the typical medical treatment. Um, in terms of the testing that gets done for Meniere's disease, usually you'll get some sort of a hearing test. And some doctors will say, well, if you don't have hearing loss, it can't be Meniere's. I beg to differ with that. I'm, I almost don't even care if that's what you're calling it, because if you have hearing loss and dizziness and vertigo or hearing changes and dizziness and vertigo, uh, pretty good chance it's that Meniere's type situation. And so what do we start looking for immediately? Metabolic problems, like what's going on with your immune system. And so from the medical standpoint, you'll get a hearing test. Uh, sometimes they'll do what's called a, a VNG or video nystagmography, 
where they put the goggles on you and they look, do different tests looking at your peripheral vestibular system. And, and sometimes they'll find what's called a directional preponderance during a caloric test. Or sometimes the doctor will just say, hey, it sounds like Meniere's disease. Let's go ahead and treat you that way, which, uh, you know, it probably is. So we just talked about the symptoms. We talked about some of the testing that uh, medical professionals do. Uh, what do I do? Uh, again, sometimes if the disease, if the uh, you know the diagnosis isn't super confirmed, you know, I'll do some of the VNG testing myself. In terms of the metabolic side of things, looking for what's going on with the immune system. So I do what's called a, a, a comprehensive lymphocyte immunophenotyping, and that's basically an immune system fingerprint test. We'll look for autoimmunity doing multiple tissue. Uh, antibody testing, and then we'll do all sorts of things like all the sort of regular stuff that no one seems to do in these patients, like looking at thyroid function and vitamin D and all these different nutrients, basically trying to track down where's the fire, right, and how do we put it out. And so treatment-wise for Meniere's, from the medical standpoint, is pretty much the diuretics, you know, restrict your sodium. For me, it depends on what do we find in that person. I've had many cases of Meniere's over the, uh, the years of people that had diabetes, and that uncontrolled diabetes is what was fueling their Meniere's process. Other times it's been they had an undiagnosed Hashimoto's or undiagnosed uh, autoimmune problem of different kinds, and it was the inflammation that needed to be dealt with. And there are things you can do to regulate the immune system and modify the immune system if you know what you're looking for and if you know how to do it. And I don't really want to get into that because I don't want people trying to self-treat because that's generally a waste of time. Now, of course, one thing we also do in my practice is we look for those kind of circuit problems I was alluding to. because. If you have Meniere's for very long, you can end up with kind of chronic vertigo and dizziness because of changes in your cerebellum and changes in things called your vestibular nuclei. So some Meniere's patients actually need to have a certain type of, for lack of a better term, vestibular rehab that is very, very guided and specific for them so that they can fully recover. Now, we'll always look at the uh, metabolic factors, and if that gets us everything we want, great, but some people... A small number, maybe 50 to 20 percent of people, will still need to have that specific type of recalibration rehab to make sure they get back to being totally symptom free. So in this short video, that's Meniere's disease, right? It causes hearing loss, hearing changes, vertigo. Sometimes you can get drop attacks where it gets so bad that you literally fall over. Uh, you can get terrible, terrible debilitating vertigo. I've had so many patients over the years that stopped driving because they didn't know when they were going to get a vertigo attack. I mean, can you imagine that? You're driving and you have to you start spinning and you've got to pull over. Or, you know, God forbid you uh, cause a wreck or hurt yourself or someone else. Um, so those are pretty much the symptoms. Tests we talked about those um, uh, causes again. You just got to make sure. I guess ultimately you just got to make sure you're working with someone that knows all that stuff we just talked about. Because if you have Meniere's disease and it's not getting better and you're doing these things we just talked about, well, there's probably an inflammatory problem or immune system problem. So make sure you're working with someone that knows. A, what tests to order to track that down, how to interpret those tests, and third, uh, what do they do about it, right? So uh, that's it for today. That's Meniere's disease. So I uh, hope you found that helpful. I'll see you later.